Do you ever have that feeling where you need to sit there and defend the markup? Or maybe selling your work feels like this constant uphill battle and it feels like every customer that's coming your way wants something for nothing and that sense of desperation is bubbling up to the surface. Or maybe you're where I was in my florist business where I felt like I couldn't raise my prices. There was no way that I could charge a premium for my work. I had to constantly keep giving away my work, relying on discounts, and I truly never felt confident when it came to the selling process within my business. Let's shift that mindset. Today I want to talk you through my exact framework for selling with confidence so that it can feel easy for you to attract the customers willing to pay full price for your work. And that feeling of standing in front of a client or reading an email or navigating the conversation on the phone when it feels like everywhere you turn you're trying to convince your clients that it's worth it. And I spent three years in my business constantly feeling like I was on the hamster wheel of lowering my prices, sitting down to pay the bills, never having enough money, wondering what was wrong with me, why the heck can't I figure this out, what is it that everybody else knows, what is it that I'm missing, and beyond it just being exhausting, because it was exhausting, and it is exhausting trying to figure out how to get yourself out of the hamster wheel. The other thing is it just really really doesn't feel very good. And the thing that always surprises people when I talk to them is like, I am not naturally extroverted. <laughs> and in actual fact, I feel really uncomfortable during sales conversations. But this is the secret sauce, because I want to walk you through my step-by-step -step approach so that you can feel so confident in how you get to sell your work. And one of the biggest mistakes that I made, and that I see so many other floral designers make, is this feeling the pressure to constantly prove or defend the value of your work. But that actually only ever compounds the situation. It adds to the graspy energy, it adds to the desperation, it adds to the fear and the doubt and the hesitation. It's like this thing that compounds our own insecurity is our own actions to defend our own thinking. And I so wish that somebody had sat me down and been like, hey, hey, dear introverted floral designer that wants to make money, <laughs> Let's talk about a super simple way, a totally different perspective that you can rely on day after day after day in your business. So whether you feel like you're full of energy and you're having one of those unusually extroverted afternoons, or if you're like me and you're like, I am introverted through and through, can I please learn a super simple framework for selling my work so it doesn't feel like such a struggle, so that I can show up with more confidence, so that I can increase my revenue, so that I can skyrocket my sales, so that I can become a high profit, confident, empowered florist, because that is my goal. Let's get you to that experience faster. And by the end of this episode, I want you to walk into your florist business with so much confidence and so much clarity that you know exactly what you need to do to sell your dream designs. And it doesn't feel hard, it doesn't riddle you with anxiety, so that you never have to defend your pricing or the markup. And the sales experience, the getting your customers to yes, feels really easy and it feels really effortless. And the concept and the strategy that nobody had ever introduced me to in my business was, hey, do you have a system in place for yourself and your team that makes selling feel easy, makes it feel simple, and makes it feel so clear in terms of the exact steps that you're going to go through or you're going to train your team to go through to get your customer from the inquiry or calling you or reaching out in your DMs to the actual payment part of the process. And I know when I say the word systems, your eyes are going to gloss over and you're going to be like, poke my eyes out with a hot viewer but please hear me out because this is the thing that's going to save your energy, it's going to help you conserve your creativity, and it's going to get you to the point where you're making more money so fast. And it doesn't have to be boring, and it doesn't have to be complicated, and it definitely doesn't have to require you to invest in expensive software. So the first thing I want you to think about is have you got a simple, repeatable, reliable system that makes selling feel easy in your business? Because when you have a really clear process, 
process in place, it's not going to feel like such an energy drain. And you're going to know exactly what you need to say, how you need to show up, how to respond when a customer walks in the shop or calls or sends you a DM or sends you an email. So much of my hesitation and my fear and my anxiety was because I was constantly caught off guard. So that every time the phone rang, every time somebody would walk into the shop, every time I would receive a new wedding inquiry, every time somebody would want to talk about funeral flowers, I feel like I'd have to start from scratch. And that is exhausting. It's draining, but it's also when you're in that state of reaction mode, that's when we start to second guess our pricing. That's when we start to devalue our own work. That's where we start to get into that kind of like desperate energy. So this idea of really thinking through, okay, what is a very simple, easy, repeatable process I can put in place to make it like guaranteed that your selling process feels really, really strong. And I want you to think of the experience of walking into a McDonald's back in the good old days when there used to be like real life humans that would take your order. <laughs> I mean, maybe back in the 80s. Let's talk about what it was like to go to McDonald's in the 80s. Because if you remember walking up to the counter and just saying, you know, I want to order a Big Mac, their very first question to you was always, would you like fries with that? That wasn't out of happenstance. That wasn't out of somebody just decided that was a good idea. That was the literal script that they were given through their training process. And it's one of those things that just becomes so clear when you start to look for it and when you start to really see who's good at selling. Scripts will drive your business forward so quickly. It also takes all of the guesswork out of what's required when you're navigating any conversation with a customer. So you can create a script in your business for literally any conversation. Somebody's walking in off the street and they want to talk about funeral flowers. Somebody else is calling because they want to talk about wedding flowers. Somebody has sent you an email because they're wanting to do a private flower crown workshop. Having a template in a system that you you can rely on every single time is so powerful because then you don't have to think about, oh my gosh, what did I say in response to this question or how, what's the right order for me to even ask my questions when I'm taking an order from a customer. When you can lay those things out and have a very clear structure for you to follow, and again, this doesn't have to be complicated. This can be on a notes app on your phone. This can be a Google Doc. This can be something that's literally written on pen and paper. But when you can sit down and actually have that script written out for yourself and take everything through through step by step, you're going to feel such a shift in your energy through the sales process. That shift in energy is where the confidence comes from. And you've often heard that phrase of confidence is what sells. This is like a shortcut to feeling more confident in your sales process, because then you're going to feel so much more in control of the relationship. So that when a customer walks in and says, hey, I need to organize some funeral flowers, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to pull a clipboard out that says funeral flowers and you're going to navigate your customer through that experience. Because you've thought this through ahead of time, because you have a very clear script, because you have a very clear template, selling all of a sudden feels so simple and so easy, and you're not paralyzed by that whole experience of just staring at the blank page all of the time. Which then leads me to number two. One of the easiest ways that you can make selling so much more impactful and so much simpler, and especially if you have a team, but coming up with your florist shop menu. So this is one of those ultimate power moves, because you you get to sit down in your business as the creative director and decide the products that your business is going to sell. So this is exactly like if you ran a restaurant, your chef decides what the menu is. You get to do exactly the same thing in your business. And one of the things that really threw me for a loop and this whole notion of like the customer is always right is kind of right in principle, except in the instance of working with customers as a florist, they're working with so much either mis information or just no information. And it's a weird human phenomenon where every single human that walks around this planet thinks that they should know about flowers so that when they walk into your business, when they call you, when they walk into the shop, they present themselves like they know how this whole thing happens. But on the flip side, I can guarantee you, if you ask the next 10 customers that walk into your shop or the next 10 people that call you, if you ask them when peonies are in season, they're not going to know. <laughs> they're not going to know that peonies are in season six to eight weeks of the year and that six to eight weeks is totally dependent upon what happened in winter and how wet spring was. They don't know that, but they show up with this energy and this
this authority that they've given themselves that they're supposed to know how this whole thing works. So the easiest way that you can put yourself in the power position and feel so confident with what you're selling, and this is the shortcut to be able to create the dream work you've always wanted to create, is to sit down and create your florist shop menu. So you get to decide what you're selling, you get to decide the ingredients that you get to use, you get to decide the price points, you get to decide the packaging, the formats, the construction, the silhouettes, the shape, the rhythm, all of it, because you are the creative director in your business. So this is like the ultimate shortcut to making selling feel so simple and so easy in your business is sitting down ahead of time and creating your florist shop menu. The third thing I want you to remember is double down on simplicity. And this is one of my core values when it comes to being a creative and it comes to being a business owner. And it's one of those things that you can keep coming back to again and again and again and again. Because with all the layers of technology, with all the different apps, with all the different software, with all of the different things that we have in the 1700 hats that we get to wear as business owners and creative entrepreneurs, doubling down on simplicity is going to be the fastest way for you to get where you want to go. The more complex you make the sales process, the more stressful it's going to feel. And the more confusion you're going to create for yourself, for your team, and for your customer. So instead of feeling the need to offer your customers 27 different options and endless customizations, be super intentional and super strategic and decide ahead of time what options and what formats, what decisions you want to give your customers. How much flexibility, how much leeway do you want your customers to have in terms of the decision-making process that they have for the work that you create? When you can focus on simplicity, it has such an incredible ripple effect in so many different areas of your business. But if we come back to that restaurant analogy, it's exactly like you could walk into one restaurant and they could be really explicit about saying no swaps, no changes, no alterations. The food is what it is. You can also walk into a totally different restaurant and on the menu, things might be delineated as gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan. They might also have a giant thing at the bottom that says, ask your server for alternatives, swaps, and suggestions if you have dietary requirements. Both of those businesses have just decided ahead of time what the rules are. And I made so much stress for myself and caused so much anxiety for myself because I didn't know that that's what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't know that when you run the business, you get to set the rules. So you get to decide ahead of time, how much flexibility are you going to give your clients? You get to decide ahead of time, what kind of swaps do you want to allow? You get to decide ahead of time, how much input, how much leeway, how much flexibility, how much decision making are you going to allow your customers to make? And things really started to shift for me in my business when I made the conscious decision to take charge of the work that we were creating, to own the sales process, and to remember that your customers have come to you because they see you as the expert. They have created this invisible pressure for themselves that they think they're supposed to know how this whole thing works. But when you start to scratch beneath the surface, you'll realize, oh, like the the poor humans, the poor customers have put so much pressure on themselves that they think they're supposed to know how this whole thing works, but she's getting married at the end of summer and peonies aren't in season. It's not our job to bend over backwards to make everything happen for them magically. But I made the mistake so early on of taking my customers' words at face value. Like quite literally, she would say, I want peonies in my bouquet. I assumed it was my job to bend over backwards to find peonies for her bouquet. When in actual fact, what she's saying is, I'd love to have peonies in my bouquet. And I'd be like, that's great. That's an amazing starting point. Okay, so based on the season that you've decided to have your wedding in, peonies won't be available. But there are some incredible alternatives that are actually even better. And because you've taken ownership of the sales process, because you've really stepped into that position of being the expert and authority, all of a sudden, the dynamic in the relationship changes. All of a sudden, she's realizing, oh my gosh, there's so many things I didn't know, but I'm in such safe hands and I trust you and go out there and work your magic because you make the intentional decision to step up and take ownership. And that requires you to truly like double down on simplicity because there are truly like 10,000 permutations and combinations at any given time for any one bouquet. It is overwhelming for anybody, let alone a floral designer. So if your customers feel like they get to have dictation and control of the entire situation, remember, this is your business. You're the creative director. You get to take control and having a simple
simple sales process is going to make this whole relationship feel so much better. And then the very last thing that was so helpful for me is preparation ahead of time. Now, I am a huge believer in making decisions ahead of time so that when people walk in off the street and somebody wants to talk about funeral flowers or somebody calls and says, hey, I want to talk about my wedding flowers and I want to talk about right now or somebody sends you a DM or somebody sends you an email that you've made the decision ahead of time in terms of exactly how you're going to navigate that situation. And even if you've figured this out for like 80% of your business, you're going to feel so much more in control and so much more on top of the selling process. So really putting the work in ahead of time to get your systems sorted. Again, doesn't have to be complicated, but getting your systems sorted will make you feel so much more confident every single time the phone rings. And when you can feel confident because you have your systems to come back to and rely on, then you're going to stop questioning your own pricing. You're going to stop feeling the pressure of giving away all of your work. You're going to stop feeling that sense of defensiveness in terms of, well, I need to rationalize my prices and they're giving me that weird look and they're telling me that it's too expensive. Because all of a sudden your systems allow you to show up with more confidence. You can sell from a really clean space. So you're not allowing your self-doubt to get in the way. You're no longer allowing your emotions to stand in the way of your profitability. And you will quite literally overnight see your bank balance go up and you will see your profitability increase. All because you've made the decision to do this work ahead of time. And I want you to think about this like you were walking into somebody else's business. Even if you were walking into a McDonald's as an employee, the reason that McDonald's is able to so efficiently hire so many teenagers to do this work is because they've decided ahead of time this is what the script is. They double down on simplicity. They know exactly what products they sell and they have their own menu and they've done the work ahead of time to train their staff to set them up for success. So this is really stepping in to the CEO mindset, remembering that you get to set yourself up for success and then learning how to sell like a boss. And these four things have truly changed the game for me when it comes to learning how to sell with confidence. Because confidence is not something that you're born with and getting good at sales is not some sort of like inherent trait. There are people who are just naturally attracted to learning how to get good at sales. So they've put in the sweat equity to learn how to get good at sales. So therefore they are good at sales. But Learning how to get good at sales is just another skill to learn. Exactly like learning how to do phone free installations or casket covers or how to make a fully wired wedding bouquet. Just another skill to learn and sales is exactly the same thing. So selling with confidence is all about having the systems in place, simplifying your offering and having the foresight to prepare ahead of time. And when you have those things in place, when you've covered off these foundations, the desperation, the anxiety, the stress, the fear, and the doubt literally fade away because then you know exactly what you need to show up in any sales conversation and you feel so clear in the value that you provide your customer. So remember, you are the expert and your customers have come to you because they see you as the expert. Put these strategies in place and not only will you feel more confident, but you'll also start to attract the right customers to your business because they will appreciate the value of your work and they'll see that it's worth it. So take these concepts, apply them to your business today so that you can feel more confident in the sales process. You can start selling your dream designs and you can see your profitability skyrocket. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for being here. If you're brand new to my flower family, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If anything in this video was helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Have the most amazing week and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.